President Obama blaming America's slipping education system on teachers being distracted because they aren't paid enough. Take a listen. We're spending a lot of time thinking about how do we train teachers more effectively, uh, how do we pay them more so that they have uh, fewer worries about supporting themselves and really focus on uh, the work that they do. But is throwing more money at education the answer? We welcome back our power players along with David Webb, who still has his bat, and Carl Jeffers is here. Lenore, pay teachers more. That's the solution? I'm shocked. You're, you're saying that we're going to solve a problem by spending more money? No, I've never heard that before. <laughs> the problem with teaching, it's not going to be getting teachers to be calmer because they think they're being paid more. We are now spending, in 2009, if we spent $151,000 per student to get them from K through 12. That's three times what we spent for the same K through 12 in 1970, and yet performance is flat and in some cases degraded just depending on the topic. So the problem isn't throwing more money at this, at, at this issue, it's really more a, a problem of incentives. If you have poor performance, then the Department of Education can command more money. Yeah, of course the problem People is, is that the teachers, teachers Union don't want to pay teachers different salaries, but Gary B, we have an inverse relationship in Washington, D.C., right? The more we spend, don't test scores go down? Uh, it, it's absolutely ridiculous, David, and you're right. In, in fact, you know, Lenore used some numbers there. Oftentimes the numbers that are reported are about one half of what is actually spent. For example, in Washington, D.C., per pupil in the D.C. school district, they're spending $28,000 per pupil. Now, for $28,000 a pupil, everyone could go to Sidwell Friends like the Obama kids. Right. And yet, you're absolutely right. Test scores across the board, no matter how you use the metric to uh, uh, metric you use to measure achievement, they haven't budged since the 70s. And yet, as Lenore pointed out, spending per student has skyrocketed. Carl Jeffers, I mean, money is not the solution, clearly, sometimes, anyway, right? Well, I don't know. I think I'm going to get that bat away from David for uh, <laughs> people get That's right. You're pretty here. far away. You're over in L.A. That's all right. I'm not taking any chances. But, but the reality is, is that what most of you've been concentrating on is the cost per pupil for uh, the education, which includes a lot of administration and other costs, which I agree are bloated and fat. But that doesn't negate the fact that the what we started out talking about was the actual compensation for teachers themselves. And the more quoted the, the, the uh, uh, formula that the uh, cost for the education has gone up three times since 1970, but teacher salaries since 1970 have not kept pace with uh, both in the private sector and with government. But David, and the reality is we need to pay David, them isn't the more in order to compensate that those. you always end up with an industry. Now you have yeah. the education industry that always finds a way of getting the lion's share of the government income. Right. Let's look at the real well, relationship. Paul talks about sometimes. the rise in costs. The fact is that teachers' pay is not what educates students. We have Bob Chan, and former general counselor of the uh, NEA, who says it's about power, and that's what they're interested in. They power. advocate because they have 3.2 million teachers. We have 7.2 million people in the education system, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, only 3 million at the elementary level. We have inverse relationships between the rise in costs, the dropping of educational levels, the fact is that money's not the solution, and I want to use the example at the collegiate level of waste and failure in the education system. George Washington University has a professor. She hasn't shown up for class for two semesters. She gave her students A's, and those parents, parents, you're paying $40,000 right. a year to send yeah, your yeah, kids yeah, there. Yeah, I, I, I want to say that's an example of an education system. Hold on a second, because we haven't heard no. from Jason. We haven't heard from Jason. Jason, <laughs> the point is, in business, we have return on investment. Uh, you always have to have a return on investment. There is none with regard to education, is there? Well, I mean, there is a return on investment, but I, I, you know, at the end of the day, where's this magic money coming from? This is clearly some political posturing ahead of the election so be, so the teachers can feel good about voting for a Democratic It's candidate. all about power and money. Well, it is about power and money, and at the end of the day, the, we can't get the budget passed with uh, right now with the super committee. Where are we going to get more money to pile on top of this 
it, it, it's not there. And to be honest, if we're going to look at reforming the education system, we need to think about pushing virtual classrooms forward at this point because that's where we're going to be 10, 20 years in the future. It's going to be online. And well, Lenore, what going worries me is that education is getting a bad reputation. I, I, in some cases, very well deserved. Uh, but can we, can we sort of lift ourselves out of that? Well, like you said, about what about the return on the yeah. investment? Right. The problem we have with the government running it is that there is no feedback. If a company okay. sets up its incentives so that they are not conducive to the company being successful, right. the company fails. Guys, we, we got to leave it at government. that. We have uh, totally run out of time, but we thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. Well, Washington failure, why now those two things sadly go together.